Shenanigans, working stiffer than mannequins. Vader time like a mannequin. Mega powers, I'm savaging. Peep the babbling, got him shook off the verbal acumen. I'm the main event, meaning nobody coming after him. The topics we be tackling, ankle locking and tapping him. I hate seafood, but I might throw the Boston crab on him. Uh, you know sometimes it gets heated. Uh, you know sometimes it gets heated. What's up, man? What is going on, dude? It 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 is not CM Punk related today. We can we can rest on CM Punk for at least another twenty four hours. But uh, it looks like I called a shot a little bit because I think on was it the payback review? I said I think there's a trade going down, and I mean it hasn't been confirmed yet hundred percent. But who else is it going to be? Gable because he's lost three times to Gunther. Get him out of here! You've lost too many times. You hit your you hit your limit, but it's got to be Cody Rhodes, and that's what we're here to talk about today. Cody Rhodes, allegedly, possibly, mm. the mystery person of that trade going to SmackDown. As I look at this, it's got to be Cody, right? Like It's got to be Cody. It makes the most sense. Why would Cody be so happy to get Jay on Raw if it had nothing to do with him? I love Cody, but he's an egotistical bastard. That's why I love him. But I think he's going over to SmackDown. And I, I mean, we posed a lot of questions right before we came in live. So let's talk about let's talk about Jay first. What is he going after Gunther next? What do you think? I think that makes the most sense. He can't go after Seth. It wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. He's tied up with a, a pretty good storyline with Nakamura and right. Jay, what what I loved is when they debuted Jay on Raw. There are so many people on Raw that he has screwed over and pissed Absolutely. off. Absolutely. That I thought the thing with Sammy was fantastic. It was a nice role reversal. And I think, and I think now that I'm sitting here and the the gears are spinning, I think that's going to play into him and Kevin's relationship. Him yeah. seeing Jay come around, and I don't think that tag team. It's going to be a team for much longer once he once she sees that. Hell, we might even get a Jay and Sammy versus Judgment Day match before it's all said and done. But I think Gunther would be the move because he's never won a single championship like we spoke about before. And and what a legendary reign to end to start your first. I I, I think it would be amazing if that was to happen. I don't. What what other big name heels do they have? It's just really Judgment Day and Gunther, right? Like I can't. On Raw. <laughs> yeah, I... and well, not now, but he's tied up. I think they're they're hinting at Drew eventually mm-hmm. turning, but <sighs> yeah, they lost the uh, uh, the tables match against or whatever it was against the Viking Raiders. Yeah, so so Jay Jay is going to be tied up uh, on Raw, and if Cody is going to SmackDown, the big question is: Are they pulling the trigger sooner than we thought on the next Cody versus Roman match? I don't see. Them, I don't know if it would be considered rushing in, but he shows up on SmackDown. He's like, "Okay, I'm here. I want Roman." Right. I think. I think what's going to happen is what happened before. He's going to show up, get in Roman's face, and then something or someone's going to come out, and he's going to have to detour. I think we have John Cena over there, so maybe we get a tag match at the next big pay per view against somebody. It looks like Cena Miz might be playing up, so maybe I think like maybe Miz Theory versus Cody and. Cody and Cena, something like that. I, I just, I it's it, it's happening soon. It feels like I don't know. Let's say, but if you if you look at the roster, who the trade would have been for Jay? No disrespect to Chad Gable, Jay or Gable for Jay Uso would not have been a believable trade. That's main event Jay Uso, and I think out of everyone who's been involved with the Bloodline story, I think Jay Uso stock has rose the most. So you gotta have you gotta have equal swapping there, and I think I think Cody's that guy. You think they're gonna pull a Triple H trade and trade four people for Jay Uso? <laughs> oh man, I would it would make me happy for Jay, but I'd feel bad for the other four. No, I don't, I don't think that's gonna happen. Um, I, I was also bringing up before we started recording that this is smart because they want Jay versus Jimmy. 
but I don't think they want to pull that trigger too soon. Of course, we're only in the third inning of the fucking Bloodline story, according to Paul. So we got to drag that son bitch out. So I think we're. I don't think we're getting it till at least Mania. I think they're gonna make it a big one-on-one match at Mania. So they probably won't even see or touch each other till the Rumble, I imagine. So if Cody is indeed the one that was traded, which all signs point yes. Yes. He didn't. I mean, if he goes to, if he is on SmackDown, I don't know of any other roadblock that would pop up between him and Roman. Do you, I, I guess there's a couple ways you could look at this. Do you, do you give Cody the, the Shawn Michaels treatment and he wins back to back Royal Rumbles, maybe at an earlier entry to really solidify the, the grind? Or do you have him win a number one contenders match or like, beat solo one-on-one i i think i think the rumble spot would be really good for him because i don't we haven't had a guy in a while go go around and pull double duty since roman who's the last who's the most recent guy to win more than one it's probably roman right orton yeah yeah but but his wins were so spaced out though you know what i mean so i think i think that would be a good notch in his belt to continue said story um it just feels it feels a little early. That's why I, that's why we keep bringing up Roblox. It's like, what? How are we going to handle this for the next? When's Mania? Six months away? <laughs> Damn near. About seven, seven About or eight. Seven. Hey, I was pretty goddamn close. I didn't graduate, goddamn it. But <laughs> I think. What what's the, what let's 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 spit off some Roblox. We got theory over there. I think I have a hot fucking I have a hot theory. That sounds weird. I think LWO is gonna turn on Ray, and I think they're gonna be the secondary heel faction on uh, SmackDown. I think that's a good look. I think I think there's some, gonna be some jealousy between uh, Santos and Ray because it was supposed to be Santos's match. So I don't know. I don't know what else it could be. Do you think, so if you look at this, Cody goes to SmackDown, Jay is on Raw. Who has the more exciting story coming up? Is it is it Cody finishing the story, or is it everything that's in front of Jay Uso? Because if he does beat Gunther, and I think that would be a very good choice right. to do it. Right. Damn, like. I, I, still, I, I say it's Cody by the edge because it's going to be a world title. Um, if they both win their respective titles, that they, if, if Jay does go after that, um, I think I think Cody would have the slight edge there for sure. I mean, if you look at the SmackDown roster and, and Cody becomes a member of said roster, I don't know. I mean, you could kind of get like a dream match scenario out of John Cena and Cody. I was I was thinking I was using my little thinking noggin up here. What if we finally get that old turn, brother, brother? What if what if it's on Cody Rhodes? I, if there's a baby face you can turn heel on who's hot, I, I think it's I think it could be Cody. Now I, I think this is like a five percent chance of happening, but but the excitement that could be built around it, I think could is is it's through the roof. Could you imagine the diss tracks John Cena writes about Dusty Rhodes? Oh. <laughs> if only Christian was in WWE the dad jokes that we could get? Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, that has to be a Braun Breaker could come up. I guess that's an option of someone to deal with Cody for a little bit. There's not many though. It doesn't look like, so we're gonna have to get straight to it. That's if Roman returns to SmackDown. Well, I mean, and see, that's the beautiful part. Yeah, you know, I'm glad you brought that up because I had been thinking about this for a couple of days. Right. So a lot of people complain that Roman isn't there. He doesn't wrestle every major paper. Oh, I'm one of those guys. He's talking about me. Every time we have a conversation, I always bring up, I say I hate when they bring up how long his, his effing title reign is, and he's not even there. How many times has he defended it this year? But go ahead and continue on your point. I'm sorry. It's a brilliant point. Oh, no, no, you're fine. <laughs> so to, to this point, look at the product of all the pay-per-views or PLEs that Roman has not been a part of. Have you really missed him not being on the card? Have they, they suffered? They can arguably the be the better pay-per-views of the year. I will give you that because he wasn't on Backlash. And I, that's my favorite uh, pay-per-view of the year. So that could be argued because I think his matches, 
they're great they're great great main events but you always kind of know what's coming at the end you know the finish so these other pay-per-views with the different main events you don't know what's coming so it's a little more exciting so that's an excellent point actually that and, and you're getting a lot more people to have that main event exposure right within within wwe this last one payback phenomenal pay-per-view mm-hmm. no roman reigns actually i don't think there was even outside of jay showing up really no mention of the bloodline right absolutely absolutely that's that's a phenomenal point and another another bloodline thing that i, I think we should speak on is and because a lot of people are saying solo could be the one to take on roman at mania you know, solo has a big push coming i don't I don't, he hasn't had that. He, I think he needs to get some more reps in the ring. Now that he's bad, I just want to see more of a build of his dominance. Like, he should have a Gunther-esque reign of terror, even without, with or without a title, on SmackDown. I don't think he's quite started that yet. I would say if if Solo was to break from the tribe and, and go out on his, his own, mm. I really think the way Solo has been booked, you could slide him into that old Samoa Joe role or Absolutely. Kane role. The, the the thing that made Kane so appealing to the office in WWE is he was so versatile. If you needed a believable big monster on a whim, Kane snaps, choke slams like five dudes, you've got the monster. Absolutely. I think you have that in solo. Right, absolutely. And I, over this last summer, I went on the binge of just old school pay-per-views, everything from Attitude, Airs, Ruthless Aggression. And my, if, I, God willing, Kane was on every pay-per-view I watched. And I was watching the most random of pay-per-views. I'm like, this man was getting his paychecks. And you know how I feel about Kane, on record. I, <laughs> I'm not the biggest fan of Kane, but that man was getting his paycheck. When, I, this is a little off talk. I know we're talking about Cody. I know we're talking about Jay. What's the hottest era of Kane to you? I think I'm in the minority for this. Okay. And I, as soon as I say it, I, I can't wait to see the look on your face. Authority came. No. Okay, thank God. <laughs> as soon as he lost the mask. That's when you liked him. Well, I liked him before. Right. But I mean, like, you, hottest era. I think if, if you look how he was built at that time, like, he was built as a psychopath. It might have been the craziest he was ever booked. I mean, the mm. man took jumper cables to the nether regions of Shane McMahon. Yeah. He, Here comes the money. <laughs> he, he tried to, he survived a, attempted homicide by Shane McMahon. That he set true. JR on fire. They brought him to the ring in handcuffs and police security. Now, how much more of a dangerous human being can be booked? I how, thought how, that did was, he win any big titles around that time? I think he won the big gold, didn't he? Or was that later? Right. No, uh, he had a uh, he had a triple threat match for the title at Armageddon with Triple H and Goldberg. Yep. And that was when the evolution cleaned up all the gold. Outside of that, like Kane never really got say his comeuppance on Triple H for right. well everything, but yeah, absolutely. Who did around that time besides Sean? And even then, it didn't last that long. Arguably, Bill, but that came at a cost. And they probably and they pulled the trigger a little too late. Probably I, at an elimination chamber. What I'm hearing from this, I think we have another podcast to do at some point. We discussing. we do we got we got a series coming up that you guys are gonna like. We got a rebooking series. We're we're putting it together right now, but that's that's a good point. Uh, absolutely, I my favorite era of Kane was was straight straight in. My God, that it's it's Kane. Like that's my favorite. That first era, the first introduction, all the way up to that Mania match with Taker because. Like, I'm torn, right? Because the streak was so great. But if you wanted to build up Kane, what better way than beating your brother at Mania? But that was my favorite era, Kane. The Kane that had one sleeve and the cutoff sleeve. That's the most badass era. That, and then it passed out. I was just like, I fucking hate this guy. I hope he falls in his flames. I'm totally kidding. Politically, I'm not. But I, yeah, I just don't know. <laughs> Let's get back on track. Cody and Jay. Uh, I, I think this trade, I, I hope we get more trades like this. Not too often. But every few months, a big trade like this, I think it can keep things interesting with the brand split. I would agree. And <clears throat> I'm wondering if long-term booking, Cody did this to get rid of the one of the Bloodline members and storyline purpose, just to make it a little bit more even for the odds. 
I do think, though, if you're going to do Roman versus Cody again, I do think the match between him and Solo needs to happen because Solo was the reason why he did not become the champion right. at WrestleMania. Absolutely. I think you got to build him big. I think I think the forgotten man in all this. We talked about you know what's going to look like for Jay, what's going to look like for Cody. What what about Jimmy? Do you think Jimmy is going to have as good of a push as Jay is on Raw, or is he going to be the forgotten brother? Because I would hate to see it. Because I think Jimmy has also come a long way on the mic. I think he's just as good as his brother in the ring. So I I, I just don't want to see him become you know fodder for people to get beat up because that's kind of that's kind of what I felt when he had the face to face with Cena. A lot of people clowned him for it. I, I, do you see him getting any any kind of single title, or is he just going to become jobber to the stars? Well, I'm glad you asked. Mm. So, <clears throat> I want to say this as respectfully as humanly possible, which uh. means I'm about to shit all over this man. Okay. God damn. You're looking at, and I, I love him to death. I love him to death. I do not want this to come off as derogatory. Uh. He is a modern day Mari Gennetti. Ooh. I want to. I, I want to disagree. I think. I think he has the potential. I think he. I. Th- I do agree. I think he's going to be booked as the modern day Gennetti. I think he will be forgotten about. You have too many. You have too many guys that they're trying to build up over there. I think Jimmy's going to fall to the wayside, especially if he's not officially with the bloodline. He's just a heel separated from them. I think that's going to be bad for him booking wise and it's unfortunate because it would be so cool if they you know kept jay and jimmy on the same level so when we do get that main match it's not like oh jay's gonna kick the crap out of him and there's it's a foregone conclusion you know what i mean i think if you rank all the bloodline members (laughs) no matter how you do it jimmy's Jimmy's lost it's so unfair that injury he got like don't get me wrong it made the story it made main event jay who he was but god he had a set on the sidelines which is what makes the story perfect if they can build to it correctly but yeah like just outside of kayfabe for shoot that sucks man like you gotta be happy for your brother but at the same time like you're only there because i got a boo-boo you know what i mean so with jay going to raw Mm. There, there's so much that he can go do and the feuds uh, he could atone for everybody that he wronged in the bloodline pay his sure. penance overcome oh, those obstacles matches with riddle mcintyre maybe kevin owens one-on-one mm. i do think him tagging with sammy would be interesting what could be interesting if this trade happens because i was dead set and steadfast that war games is leading to judgment day versus seth Cody, Sammy, and Kevin. What if it's War Games, but it's still Judgment Day, but it's Sammy, Kevin Owens, Jey Uso, and, say, Matt Riddle? I don't like that last name. <laughs> well, see, I, I was going to say Seth Rollins, but God knows how long the story with him and Nakamura runs. I, I don't think this is ending anytime soon. That, that is true. And then even if it doesn't, I don't know if I really want to see Seth back in the mix with them, unless he has to be because he was cashed in on. And we get a cash in the next pay-per-view and that brings Seth right back into the fold. Do you think, and I know again, we're getting a little bit off topic, the, the double briefcase. So J.D. McDonough provided Damian Priest the Judgment Day Money in the Bank briefcase. Yeah. Priest doesn't open the briefcase. They talk about switching the contract over. Do you think we get a swerve where... He goes to cash in and the contract's not in that briefcase? <sighs> See, when I saw that, I thought about it, and I was like, oh, they're going to make this so complicated. I I do, if, we're play- if I'm a betting man, I don't think Priest successfully catches in. When the actual contract... That's the first time we ever saw the contract in person, right? I don't remember ever seeing a physical contract before. Like, on TV or anywhere. It's usually just the briefcase. I don't think we've think ever right. seen that. And I, I think I think Priest isn't going to successfully cash in. I don't... Don't get me wrong. I think they need another big heel. But I don't... Priest is already a part of the big heel faction. I, they, it just doesn't make any sense. It don't, I, I, I like Priest as a worker. But if you had to judge... Damian Priest, out of 10, all-around worker. What What are you giving him, ranking-wise? Out of 10, what's your rating? <laughs> this is all-encompassing. Work rate, on the mic. 
Yeah. Six and a half or seven. Is that is that world title work worthy? If you're trying to build up this new world title, is that a guy? Because this is to me, that's like when Jack Swagger got it. That's that's what I'm comparing it to. I would agree. My my thing is, I don't think. Uh, but again, if WWE puts the machine behind him, he's gonna be a, he's gonna be a top guy because he's gonna have the machine behind him. Right now, no. Like if if you're looking at the, there are two people on Raw right now that could believably beat Seth Rollins and be set Gunther mm-hmm. and Jey Uso. And I, I, I also, I would also throw it out there. I think if we get, I don't think we've ever got the best version of heel Drew McIntyre. I know he was a heel when he first debuted with Dolph and all that, but if he was a monster, because that dude is a big dude and he's believable. I remember seeing him in the ring with people like Brock and Gunther and you're like, this dude could dominate somebody. You know what I mean? Just like the way Rhea pins people. I think he could do that with people. He just really dominates people. Where are we going with this? But I think he could be up there. I would love to see that. Um, but my 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 thing is the dynamic if Priest does successfully cash in. He would still be the heel, but then I would imagine Finn's not going to be so cool with it. So then you have a heel chasing you. I don't know. My thing is, I do believe turning Drew heel as a monster would be really good because what is the one trademark hallmark of any good baby face run as champion? They've overcome a monster heel. Right. And Seth has not overcome his monster heel. I don't think Nakamura really fits that bill. Like he's not, he's not overpowering. He's not decimating opponents. Drew it's kind of like I said last. It's kind of like I said last paper. He hasn't been built like that. He literally just turned heel and then had a match with Seth. Like we didn't get to see what he's really like as a heel in the ring, except for that match. And it was kind of like I, we talked about. It, it was the, kind of the cool King of Strong style. But if your only match was a loss, how am I supposed to believe in you as a heel? Well, the other thing, kind of jumping back to to Cody on SmackDown. Look, he beats. Solo, or he beats Roman to become the champion. What feuds are you looking at for him on on SmackDown? Like, does he heel wise? Like, by that point, have you invested enough time in elevating Austin Theory, or maybe Grayson Waller? Maybe there's a call up that could be a challenger for Cody. I don't. That's the other thing. Like, I think that's one of the reasons why it's so good right now to have Roman as champion because anybody you put against him is going to be an over baby face. Cody, they're not an over heel unless they're taking a dig at Dusty. That is true. That is true. No, I see what you're saying about that. Absolutely. Uh, back to Drew for a second though. I think, I think he can fill that role that role that Brock did. You know what I mean? Maybe not. Don't just hot shot the title on him every fucking time. There is a man of color in the ring. Maybe don't do that because that was a bad part of Brock's reign. But everything else you could say, you know, maybe less racism and then just all apply that to uh, to Drew. I think that's I think that's what he that needs right now. Who? Because I I wouldn't. Would you describe Roman as dominant or is it more of a? It's more of a family family. If that makes sense, right? It's more of his family providing the safety net. As opposed to his own skill, from from a storyline caping aspect, I struggle to immediately think of any Roman matches that have not ended in assistance from the family. It, almost every match, the 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 formula is kind of like it looks like Roman's going to lose, and then he gets helped. That's basically what it's been for a while now. That's how he has w- the most dominant w- since he stacked uh, Daniel Bryan and Edge. That's how WCW build Hogan. That is true. That How is many true. times did Hogan, on the verge of being on the losing end, then out comes an NWO member and Hogan gets the W? Yeah. How long? How long did the NWO last year wise? Was now it you, was it three years? Are you talking consecutively or total? Uh, ho, ho, while Hogan was there, I don't want to count this stuff with Jeff Jarrett. Hogan ran NWO. How long did that last? Three, three years, three and a half years. It seems about right. 96 to like 99. Was he still in it? Yeah. 
Well, the, the, it was he would take so many vacations similar to Reigns. Yeah, I guess that's a pretty great comparison now that I think about it. Except minus the race. Good job, WWE. You keep you keep getting it. Um, what would be the most exciting thing for Cody non non championship wise? What moment do you think Cody should have? on SmackDown that does not involve the world titles? I think, I don't, I don't, you know, what, is there anything outside of like a Rumble win? Super exciting for Cody. I, they've, I think they put themselves in the corner and I know when they, they talked about it after his loss, they're like, this is, you know, we want the long build, but it's like, what, we're all just kind of waiting on it. Right, we're all just like, is he gonna get the title or not? Like that's where our minds have been programmed to put. So everything is gonna look lackluster in comparison. I don't know. So if if it was out of our brains, like for some reason we're like, it's not gonna be Cody. Cody's not the guy. Then maybe we could start thinking about those things. But that's just where, as a fan, that's where my mind's at. I'm like, I don't what what stacks up to beating Roman potentially. Nothing at this point. Yeah. But hey, the thing good. is, good. they they had Gunther take down Honky Tonk Man's Intercontinental title record. Mm. They're in... WWE is currently reshaping their history books. Absolutely. And this is what I have I've said from... I said at the start of the stream of WrestleMania last, last year. Roman is coming for Bruno's four-year reign. Ooh, every time you bring that up, I'm like, brother, brother, that is some time. In the modern era, that is a long time to hold a title. But but why would they want to... I, I get a lot of the guys they want to erase. You want to erase Punk's reign, guys like Hogan, problematic guys. Do they want to rewrite San Martino out of the history books? I think Vince does. And I'm, I'm just speaking on, on thought, and I have any proven right. evidence. Just from what I have understood, the other... The, with every day that passes and he gets closer to that, the case is like, well, let's get him there. Let's have him do it. Because then we have a modern guy we can continually bring up over the next 10 years that they're going to remember. Modern day wrestling fans do not remember Bruno San Martino, which is sad. They should. Which is unfortunate, yeah. But you have that guy every week. You're like, he was the longest reigning WWE champion of four years and some odd change. Mm. They had Honky Tonk's record go down. They're rewriting the record books. They had somebody, the Edge erased Benoit being the last person to come in, number one, and win the Rumble. Right. They're slowly changing the history. And the biggest piece and the hardest piece is going to be getting rid of Bruno's reign because of how long it was. They're so close with Roman. And keep in mind, and this is what, what I went back earlier and said, when you have... The run that Roman's on and the way the pay-per-views are, are booked, you're not noticing Roman is not on the ticket for the main event because of how good these other matches are. And it's buying WWE time to continue this. Right. I think if they wanted to do it and they wanted to keep fans interested outside of, you know, having spot booking Roman... Is is it possible? I don't know. I don't know exactly how you pull it off, but during the rain, you turn reigns back babyface. Is it possible? Oh, hundred percent. That's a way you extend it because then it feels like a new reign because it's kind of you know he's a new character. I wouldn't know how you go about it. Maybe, um, maybe Paul aligns with somebody and tries to go after Roman himself. I don't know, but. I think if they if they wanted to do it, if that's if that's the route they're going, I think that would be a smart way to do it because I don't I don't know how many years of heel Roman with the same finish I can handle at this point. Depends on what innings four through eight look like. <laughs> right. If we're look if it's third and it's been three years, dear God. <laughs> God. Uh, um, we're getting, we're getting a nine year reign. Out Apparently. of curiosity. Bruno's long reign was over eight years, right? Was it seven or eight? I think it was eight. So if you go I, nine innings in baseball and each year is considered an inning. I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have made the comparison because I just, we just put it into the ether and now they're going to watch this and go, oh, oh yeah, we were just going to be the smaller reign, but there's a bigger reign and we're so close. And we have two <laughs> world championships, so you won't even notice. Ah. I <laughs> no. 
I, I think it becomes laughable if you go that long because I, the, the fans today, right. they ain't going to be with that. And right. I, four years, like, you have broke ground. Like, congratulations, because I didn't think the attention span of the general populace would stand yeah. for that type of a reign. Uh, but they've been so creative in what they've done. Absolutely. That there's only so many bloodline family members for him to align and, and mow down. Yeah, that's true. That's we have Kishi hasn't shown up yet. You know that could extend us another year or two once he gets in there. Big Kish. Also, there's more family members to go in. Yeah, I think Umaga's son uh, debuted uh, like a month or two ago. Uh, he looks dominant. You have Jacob Fatu in the MLW. There's a couple guys you can pull from. A couple guys you can pull from. Well, as we take this home, Mike, is there anything that you want to add in in re- uh, regards to the potential trade of? Cody Rhodes for Jay Uso uh, for SmackDown? I, th- I think uh, just that I'm excited, man. Like we said, there's so many possibilities with Jay, uh, so many possibilities with Cody. Uh, it opens up brand new world. Well, not maybe less for Cody, brand new world for Jay. And uh, yeah, I'm just excited to see where it goes, man. Me too. And especially if it leads to a Gunther versus Jay Uso match. Well, guys. Do they save that for Survivor Series? Ooh. God, last question's a good one. Um <laughs> Because you don't want to do it at fast lane. Yeah. Not on a B-level pay-per-view. As, as good as they've been. I I could see it. I could see it being Survivor Series. That's a big, but I think it would be match. a tremendous tremendous waste of Chad Gable. Yeah, because if... But that's the thing. We talked about it's like, you don't, does he get a fourth match? But if he doesn't get it, where does he go? Because this, this seems like his shot at moving up the card. And if he doesn't get it, what's he do? Beat Judgment Day? I mean, everybody else has. <laughs> That's a great point to end it off, right? <laughs> Sitting on our favorite fashion. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, for Mike and myself, Scott, thank you guys so much for watching and listening, and we will see you on the next episode of Heated Shenanigans Podcast. Keep it heated. <laughs>